the logical upgrade. No, this is the upgrade that I want. Okay, so this would be the camera that I upgrade to. This would be the upgrade because I really, really want it. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Big DC. You can call me DC. And today we're going to be talking about the FX30, the Sony FX30. It is the little brother to the Sony FX3, which is a full frame camera. The FX3 is a full frame camera. The FX30 is an APS-C camera. So what's the difference between full frame and APS-C? So the main difference between them is that full frame, when you look at lenses, right, you see like a 50 millimeter or a 24 millimeter. Those are accurate. When we say accurate, that's what it actually represents. It represents a focal length. So when you shoot with an APS-C sensor, which is a smaller sensor, there is a crop factor, meaning there is a multiplication that is happening or a, a factor, right? So for example, on Sony, when you shoot on an APS-C sensor, there is a 1.5 times crop factor, meaning whatever your focal length is, let's say 30, you multiply that by 1.5 and that is your full frame equivalent lens. Why, why do I want the FX30 compared to the FX3? Right now, I'm shooting on something called the Sony A63. This was released, I think, 10 years ago. I don't remember. I'm going to put it down here, somewhere, somewhere over here, right? If I want to get an upgrade, not a side grade, right? So an upgrade meaning it enhances or it gives me features that my current camera does not have. I would get the Sony FX30. If I was going for a side grade, like an update lang, not really an upgrade, I would get the Sony ZV-E10. There's a whole different discussion on why the ZV-E10 is an amazing camera and why every content creator on the planet should be looking at this camera because it is just an amazing camera. So why the FX30? The FX30, in terms of my production, like video and film, the FX30 is very, very unique. It uses an APS-C sensor, meaning your lens selection or whatever my current lens selection is, coming from an APS-C camera, this Sony a63 is an APS-C camera, would be compatible with the FX30. So all of the lenses that I'm using right now would be directly usable on the FX30. So if I get the lens before I get the FX30, I can still use it there. The sensor and the processor is upgraded so it can shoot at 4K 120, 4K 60, which is, I feel like, a necessity at this point. There's a whole debate to that, whether or not you actually need it, because if you're shooting short films, 4K 60 isn't really needed. You'd really want the other spec that it lists, which is the 4K 422, 10-bit color. So that's a big thing when you're shooting like short film. But if you're shooting uh, online content, YouTube content, 8-bit 420, that goes up to 4K60 would be more important because you want that flexibility in post when you're shooting, like let's say, vlogs or content and stuff like that. 4K60 is just more flexible. Cinephiles won't really kill you for shooting at 4K60, you know? Before, before the FX30, I really wanted to get a Blackmagic 4K because I am a colorist. Or I'd like to say that I am a colorist. I'd like to tell people that I know how to color grade, I know the basics at least, and I know how to create a look for whatever film they want to do, right? But in all honesty, I'm probably just at the very stepping stones of basics when it comes to color grading. Although I have a very firm grasp of what color grading, color correction are, I'm not at the level of, hey, hire me because I'm really good at this, yeah. Originally, I wanted to get a Blackmagic 4K because at the time when it was popular, I was shooting a lot of short films. I was shooting for indie films, for directing classes, and uh, for like film thesis productions, I was shooting a lot of those. And I, I thought maybe a Blackmagic 4K would be an amazing purchase or an upgrade too because that's something that the industry is going towards. A lot of people are shooting now on Blackmagic, especially the Blackmagic 6K and the Blackmagic 4K. A lot of productions are using those as a, well, production camera. They use that on online content and then they use it on film so it would be a clear pathway into an upgrade right but the reason why i don't want to go into the black magic anymore is because sony released the fx30 so it became a real debate whether i wanted one of the two things so the main difference between the two for me anyway would be one black magic raw black magic raw is amazing and I've color graded Blackmagic RAW, I've color graded ARRI RAW. Anything of a RAW format is an amazing upgrade, honestly. But I rarely find myself filming either myself or the content that I'm currently shooting on RAW or needing RAW to be more specific. So I don't really need that function as of now. What I really, really rely on right now actually 
is autofocus. Now, I know a lot of film people, a lot of DOPs or first ACs or camera people would say that you don't need autofocus because autofocus is a crutch or autofocus is something that you shouldn't be using. You should be focusing on trying to get better at manual focusing, but it's a whole different world when it comes to filmmaking and content creation. It's a whole different process. Although there are similarities, there are big differences in how you produce these types of videos. For me right now, especially since I'm shooting for content creators, for Oasis, for myself with these videos, I think the FX30 would be an amazing upgrade when it comes to 4K output, 4K 60, 4K 120. Also, when it comes to autofocus, because although the A63 has decent autofocus it doesn't have amazing autofocus personally i if i had the money if i had the funds or if somebody would sponsor me <laughs> i would get this only fx30 because of those reasons alone given my current situation and everything i probably won't get an fx30 this year I'll probably work up to it sometime either next year or the, the next few years and probably just side grade into the sony zv10 or just just update my camera to a zv10 i'll probably sell my camera one of these days and get a zv10 yeah, I don't I don't really want to talk about all of the specs that have that the Sony FX30 has. I just want to talk about why the FX30 is good for me or for for my case. Again, not everybody shoots the same thing. Some people like shooting more artsy stuff. Some people like shooting indie films. Some people like shooting content like this, like online content. There's a lot of arguments on why I should get which one or what camera, right? I feel like this video is not going to be that long and it's not going to be super detailed when it comes to specs and everything because you can YouTube that. I wanted to talk about why the FX30 is a camera that I am considering and why it should be considered for some other people that might have the same situation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to comment down below what I could do better, I put it down there. And if you guys want to watch a previous video, click over here. And if you want to do the thing, click over there. Yeah, very short shoot actually. Bye.